Hi, everyone. May 2nd, 2021. Not sure if you are up on the weather. I have brought up, well, a fraction of what is taking place in the world. This is Tennessee, and this took place just this week, just this week. We spent a lot of time outside as kids, playing in the side of the yard, down the road. For Kayla Porter, Friendship Road in Henry County is home. It's family. Growing up, it's where she came to visit her grandparents. It's kind of like a little piece of heaven. Kayla now lives in that house that belonged to her grandparents. But today, she's glad she was out when a violent storm hit Friendship Road. I had to drive across the field last night and hike over here to even see that there was damage. And it's just, it just floored me, honestly. Part of the roof is gone. There was a porch here. It's totally ripped off and behind the house. Got a big, huge tree down over there. We've got pieces of the roof down in the swimming pool. The nearby Lakeway Auto Sales has caved in on top of a series of classic cars. All over this area of Henry County, there's debris, trees uprooted. This is actually part of the porch that was torn off of the front of the house. But there's a reason for the calm in Kayla's voice. She's ready to handle this. I actually am an account manager for an insurance company. Kayla will rebuild, and one day she hopes to give her son this house on Friendship Road. It's memories not just for me and my generation, but for generations ahead of us. I'm Forrest Sanders. You know, I love listening to people who have strong families. That's the way life should be. Did you know that it is Severe Weather Awareness Week? Growing up, and even in early adulthood, never did we have severe weather awareness week and ways to survive all of the severe weather okay how about uh norman oklahoma is the back window. Yeah, this is the tail light. this bro.
Yeah, not the kind of weather that we used to have. Oklahoma. The folks that we had down there involved in the survey were not able to, to kind of access the, the entire area yet. So it'll take a little bit more work of gathering details before we know kind of for sure, then t you know, details like the path length and you know, start time and you know, the other details as, as far as specific wind speeds too. But we know that there was enough damage to some structures to, to go ahead and rate it preliminarily in EF1. We haven't received any reports of, of injuries associated with that. The last night it was uh, kind of a, a little bit more favorable environment than we're expecting tonight. So we'll probably have more thunderstorms here and there. Not everybody will see thunderstorms, but there'll be some in the area through the evening and then overnight. But as far as severe storms, you know, there's some low potential for that, and the tornado potential is quite low with this, given the environmental conditions. Given environmental conditions. Norman. We're watching a movie. All of a sudden, we hear glass breaking, real loud noise. Uh, uh, it's just a sense that... <laughs> Uh, something big was happening outside, and so we assumed it was a tornado, but there was no sirens. But we went ahead and took shelter in our bathroom, um, and uh, after about five minutes, we figured out, okay, this is not tornado. There is no siren going off. This must be hail. So I came out of the bathroom, and we could see uh, that there was water, standing in my dining room. I ventured out to look at my car windows. Both of my car windows, uh, rear car windows, were completely blasted out and water getting in the car and glass all over the place. And you can see what it did to my vinyl fencing. And it's that way in the back. And of course it totally destroyed my beautiful flower beds that I have invested so much time and energy in. We had watched the 6 o'clock news, the weather. There was no discussion about a golf ball-sized hail approaching Norman or on its way. Who made the rule that sirens can only go off for tornadoes? If the National Weather Service knew that this golf ball-sized hail was on its way, why didn't somebody turn the sirens on um, and give people some warning? Warning, huh? I wonder, I wonder how much control they have over the weather right now. I, I frankly think a lot of what's going on, though, you know, I don't have any evidence to back up what I'm saying. It's just um, a hunch, a guess that they have so destroyed Mother Nature, they have so destroyed the atmosphere, ripping it apart with electromagnetic frequencies, that, uh, well, this is, you know, I'm often uh, brought back to the days of early research, 12 years ago, 11 years ago, reading articles about uh, man having the technology to control weather and can't remember the physicist's name but he said that harp the second stage of harp which you know went into operation oh boy um i want to say 98 i don't don't quote me on the year he said it, it could have ramifications that could last years and years and years. Uh, the, the catastrophic um, consequences of what man is doing could reverberate for years and years, bringing about an awful lot of what we are seeing today. I just pray to God and ask him to please just get me out of this. And he did. Alone, exhausted, and praying to be saved. A terrible nightmare for Rebecca Collins. She was driving to work before sunrise and torrential rain, unable to see that a bridge had been washed out. 
and the road was there and then the road wasn't there. And um, I went straight down about 15 feet. Surviving the impact when suddenly water began flooding into the car. I was real scared. Kicking the window out and climbing free, she clung to a nearby rock in the pitch black, calling for help in the best way she knew how. Can't sing or dance or anything, but I can whistle, and I whistled as loud as I could. Finally, 30 minutes later, exhausted and desperate, she saw headlights. If I wouldn't have rolled the window down to turn around, I would never knew she's in there. Lineman Brandon McCaskill ran over to the edge and saw Collins. He called for help, then tossed her a line. He pulled all my weight up and rescued me out of the hole. The miracle she prayed for. I know God sent Brandon. He did. Okay. Pray to Oh, wow. Um, be very careful, guys. If you are driving at night and you've got weather. So, again, this is Norman. I, I don't understand <clears throat> why people are not questioning what this weather is all about because the frequency with which these storms are coming now, it's uh, questionable. It begs questions. Spokesman from State Farm, he says already they've received thousands of claims from last night's storm and so many of those claims he said are coming from north fort worth and the keller area right where we are i mean i can't think of much else to do except cry maybe <laughs> it was a tough night and now a tough day for mark simpson who lives in far north fort worth wednesday night's hailstorm meant thursday was spent assessing the damage. I didn't think it was going to be this bad. To his home and cars. What I've seen so far, my roof is shot. Cars, windows are shot. Uh, lots of dents in them. Simpson started his day by calling his insurance agent, which is exactly what you're supposed to do, says Chris Pilsick with State Farm. That way you can get guidance on the best next steps. Start your insurance claims process. Start it. Uh, immediately take pictures of everything document everything and you know when the scammer comes to the door shut it all right so <laughs> thousands thousands of calls unbelievable you know as I mentioned uh, a lot of folks woke up this morning to see some damage to their homes but especially to their cars uh, take a look at this this gives you an idea uh, of the extent to the damage and what we experienced overnight. Here's some evidence of just how powerful that hail was. You can see this car in a neighborhood in Tarrant County took a real beating. Uh, several cars were slammed by that hail and some of the neighbors were describing it to us as, as chunks of hail. And here where I'm at in Azo, again, this is the family that had a very close call. The mobile home was actually flipped on its side uh, by the winds. Very scary situation. Uh, the family was briefly trapped inside and had to crawl out of this house. Uh, there was a seven-year-old boy uh, was part of that family as well. Three of them did go to the hospital for observation. And we caught up with one resident who describes the terrifying moment that that storm rolled through. The front porch is gone, and all of a sudden the house is almost on its side and it's starting to roll. The only thing that stopped this from rolling even more, which 
was this house right here, and that's it. Yeah, just just amazing. You know, here in Texas, we are pretty used to seeing images like these after a storm. Uh, hail damage, trees on cars, debris scattered around the road. Uh, and really, for a lot of folks, it starts this process, uh, not only trying to clean up whatever damage is done, but also what can be a relatively easy or a very long and confusing process of talking with their insurance company and filing a claim. I Did I mention we're in Texas now? We're here in Castroville where there is quite a bit of damage. Power is out to most of the town. And take a look at this. Winds were likely strong enough to topple this RV. It's now on its side. Meantime, down trees took out power lines. Farther down Highway 90, this small business was ripped apart. We just actually expanded it and, and remodeled it and everything, I think like four days ago. We we're going to have a grand opening event on Saturday. Trent Anderson sold honey out of this tent. Now all of that work scattered thanks to the storms. Just ripped this tent off. Actually, there's about 240 pounds of concrete hooked up to the tent and a stake in every corner, and it just ripped that up. Just hours after the damage, the community stepped up to help. People stopping by that just saw it and decided that they wanted to help. As the storms arrived to San Antonio, heavy rain became a concern. This car stalled near the 410 service road in Bandera. Then inexplicably, this car also attempted to drive through, coming up short and stalling. On the city's northeast side, KSAC Connect pictures revealed damage after reports of a spin up there. Trees and fences appeared to be blown down. We did get some reports of some power flashes, but no official reports of tornadoes, at least not yet. The National Oh, my God. Um, in, in the past couple of days, the highest number, 15, 15 tornadoes, Texas and, and other states. I mean, it, it, this is, uh, uh, and then I look at radar and satellite. I can't believe what I am seeing. They are whipping around the storms, whipping around the air masses all of which can create, well, whirlwinds, tornadoes, and the severe weather that you are seeing. So that was the San Antonio area. Uh, and they say here, they literally had to rip up the road to let the water um, flood out. We didn't think it was flood raining that hard. The water levels here rose quickly, some cases coming dangerously close to the front door. We just disengaged just from coming in the house. Sybil Henry has lived here for about 30 years. She says her home has flooded three times since 2017. So what we started doing, started putting everything about the floor. Uh, I have blocks made. Uh, two by fours so that if it rains, I can easily put my furniture on the blocks. Residents in Needville thankful for some quick thinking on the city's part. The water was backing up uh, and the street was acting as a dam. So what we did is uh, we went in and for now dug a hole across the, the street just to allow the water to flow through. And uh, when we when it dries out and everything, we'll probably put a culvert in there. There was much of the same in Warren County. This is video from El Campo near FM 960 and Highway 59. Flooded streets and yards. Residents in Tweeney were also hit hard. I woke up at 8 o'clock this morning, and it was already up to the floor level of my car. This was a scene at the River Oaks apartment complex. Folks up to their knees in water. I haven't seen like this since. And folks out here in Needville tell me rain events like this morning's now give them anxiety since homes out here do flood easily. Again. Yeah, rain gives people anxiety today. San Antonio flooding. Oh, man. Texas. All six of us plus two animals survived it is beyond me. But you know what? I'm blessed. Even though we'll have to replace everything, all of that back there is replaceable.
You know, hell used to be a rare event. But when it would hell, I mean, it was small. We did not see this kind of damage. Now we're seeing it. Look at this thing. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I think people need to start asking questions. I really do. I really do. I have a playlist, Weather Modification. If you don't know anything about how man can create a whole lot of destructive storms, check out that playlist. <sighs> yep. 7,500 claims. The Insurance Council of Texas says its member agencies have already received 7,500 car and home claims combined from what unfolded last night. Our Caroline Vandergriff is live for us in Keller with what you need to know to get through the process. I, I talked to two or three people today, first time they've ever been through this, and it can be confusing. That's actually surprising, Doug, because Texas is actually the number one state in the entire nation for hail damage claims. So you'd think more people would be used to it at this point, but it can be tricky to navigate. Insurance companies say the best thing you can do is document everything. It sounds like cannon fire. <laughs> it sounded, it was very, very loud. Hail as big as three inches rained down on this Keller neighborhood last night, busting through car windows and damaging homes. We've got holes in aluminum side, vinyl siding. Uh, the roof is probably shot. The gutters are probably shot. Some window screens, patio furniture. Paul Perry is no stranger to dealing with severe weather claims thanks to February's historic winter storms. Right, our whole first floor got flooded, so we're still doing repairs on that. And then this hit last night. And uh, let's just say I'm on first name basis with the insurance company at this point. The roof came off last night. Uh, it probably happened around 7.30, 7.45. Davis Camacho works at God's Country Primary Home Care. It's in the same building right next to Z's. Even though he wasn't here when the storm hit, he felt it coming just minutes before. As I was closing down, though, I could feel the air pressure changing in the building. The walls were rattling, and you could hear the roof kind of groaning. At both Z's and God's, windows were blown out. The lights for the sign by the road no longer on the sign itself, but on the ground, with wires strewn from the sign all the way down. Camacho says damage like this from a storm is brand new for him. And I've lived out in West Texas, and I've never seen anything like this. It hasn't happened to me, at least. Further down the highway, this was a familiar scene. People cleaning up branches, leaves, and massive tree trunks. At this Sonic, the enter sign knocked over and a mess in the driveway. That's where Johnny, who is a roofer from San Antonio, stopped for lunch. He was called to Hondo this morning to get repairs done. It's crazy. I hate to say it like this, but when I'm on this side of things and it benefits what I do, it's a reaction from a disaster, you know? But I'm here to help. He says he's never seen anything like this either. It's new. It's new. I wasn't expecting this. I don't think anybody was. But here we are. But here we are. The news didn't tell anybody. I did get a email from a subscriber who lives in uh, west of uh, Fort Worth, west of Dallas. Um, she did get a tornado warning. This was a couple of days ago. But as you're hearing, watch the news. They didn't say anything about this because they literally are bringing these storms up immediately. And I have it captured. And this woman has had to deal with three storms, has not been able to live in her house. Um, you know, every time... You know, she starts trying to fix up from one storm, then another storm happens, and voila. So, it's unbelievable. But of course, 
drought. It's the next catastrophe, western mega drought. Here I am in Montana now, and they got very, very little snow, which was seemed to be quite surprising. You know, there were a lot of days that were warm, and the rain is so minimal that, yes, uh, people are worried about their gardens. People are worried about you know, the drought. <sighs> halt this nightmare. Alarm as Florida set to begin release of genetically engineered mosquitoes once again. Once again. Floridians have been trying to fight this release for years. And it's the same company. And they keep releasing these hybrid wild mosquitoes and people are concerned as they should be one billion oxytec gmo mosquitoes are being released for the first time for the first time in the florida keys well i know that there were protests against the release of oxytec mosquitoes um, I don't know, was it last year? Was it two years ago? Maybe they they were able to um, you know, push back. But uh, look, I wouldn't be surprised if they're releasing them without informing anyone. So these mosquitoes apparently are, you know, they then... They're male mosquitoes, and they mate with the female mosquitoes, and they kill them off. You know, why can't we just live naturally? Why? You know, two point three million Americans exposed to high levels of strontium in drinking water. Wow, strontium. Hmm. Where did I hear that before? Oh, right. Uh, those very, 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 very long contrails spraying strontium along with aluminum, along with barium, along with lithium, along with a whole long list, spraying it into the atmosphere. And it's obvious because all you have to do is look. So now strontium high natural strontium levels in the drinking water, a metal that can harm bone health in children. Great. Great. Thousands of tons of microplastics are swirling around the atmosphere. Do you think our environment has become rather toxic? Millions of tiny pieces of plastic are swirling around in the Earth's atmosphere, traveling across entire continents, according to a new study. This environmental problem is likely to get much worse and could have serious effects on human health. Microscopic particles can be found in the ocean, bottled water, and even our poop. And they say the roads, driving, that's the biggest contributor. Hmm. Then, what do you think of? You think of Agenda 21, Agenda 2030, and they want to get us out of our cars. And they've been busting up roads. Yeah. Nowhere is safe from the pollution. Nowhere is safe from these incredibly psychopathic nut jobs, corporations, you know, our fabulous government that doesn't, you know, we have all of these federal agencies, the EPA, the FDA, they're supposed to be protecting our health, and they have done a pretty shitty job right up there with climate change. Oh, it's right up there with climate change. It's somewhat intertwined with it, hmm, since plastics are a product of fossil fuels. 
Yeah. They got it going. Nuclear fallout is showing up in U.S. honey. Decades after bomb tests. You think it's only in honey? Well, American honey? I wouldn't trust it. A whole lot of honey that they're selling, it ain't honey. Does not have the medicinal uh, effects, medicinal qualities to it at all. But huh, nothing surprises me anymore. Nothing at all. But look at this. Contractors face historically high lumber prices. Yeah, uh, lumber prices skyrocketing near 250% impacts local suppliers and buyers. And look at all these people putting up these plywood to protect their windows and their businesses and their homes. And what, a sheet of plywood? I don't, uh, maybe three quarters of an inch is near a hundred dollars and then think about all of the people who have to fix their homes after these weather events and the cost of lumber is really high but is there really a shortage of lumber well okay here lumber prices to jump 340 percent from a year ago whoa okay in terms of output, the lumber industry is now controlled by just a handful of firms. Weyenhauser, Weyer, Weyer, Hauser, I don't know, uh, Georgia Pacific, West Fraser Timber, among others, which makes it easier for capacity to be controlled. Huge quantities of lumber sitting and not in lumber yards. What is this? Ken Carpentry, YouTube channel. Okay. Oh, he's at Vermont. Okay, because I was talking to somebody here in Montana about this, and I said, it looks like he, he could be in Montana, but it's Vermont. What is this? Lumber, just sitting there? What the hell is going on? A train depot has been transformed into a makeshift lumber yard. Train loads of lumber coming out of Canada are offloaded here and then transported by tractor trailer to lumber yards across the country. But he has never seen it quite like this. So, could they possibly, and it's not just with lumber, but with everything, could they, could they, maybe deliberately cause these shortages, jack up the prices, and, huh, yeah. I stumbled on this uh, yesterday and just wanted to, I just felt I needed to show you this video. It's amazing. Um, a lumber yard, it's actually a depot, uh, train loads of lumber coming out of Canada and they're, they offload here and then they're transported by tractor trailer to different lumber yards. This lumber goes on for over a quarter of a mile, maybe uh, three-eighths of a mile. Um, I'm just astounded at how much lumber is here and I'm wondering why there's such a problem at the lumber yards. We're still seeing the prices increase um, at the lumber yards, so I'm not sure why. Wish, wish I could understand that a little better. Yeah, don't you wish you could just understand things better? Stay safe, everyone. You know, the, these, this friggin' weather of ours. 
Um, growing a line of severe storms. Now this is live. This is real time. And it is 1030 p.m. Montana time. So I think that's mount, mountain time. Um, look at this. We, we did not have you know, weather fronts looking like this before. We just didn't. But look at, you know, it's very interesting because so many people in the very beginning when I would be posting these videos and they would claim, you know, radar, it, they're searching. They're keeping track of our trains. Only, only in the eastern half of the country? No planes are going on here? Please. I've seen on radar precipitation weather fronts that <laughs> I have never seen before. But this was earlier. This was at um, what uh, six fifty six p.m. Look at this. Okay, again, I'll say it. I believe it's nanotechnology. These are nanobots. They are activating the nanobots. And they're all, you know, they have their coordinates and they're all springing up together. Yep. Don't just say, oh my God, you're crazy. You are such a nut fruitcake. God, yep. Please, first do some research. People have done the research for you. I have the playlist. And, yep, nanobots in the atmosphere. And they're being activated. So, severe weather. Again, look at this. But, of course, we have the sawtooth frequency. We've got the radar blasting away the high frequencies. And we've got the extremely low frequencies. Wong, bong, right here. And the nanobots have you know, GPSs. They, the, the nanotechnology, you should look into it if you don't know anything about it because it's pretty incredible. But... They can also send or receive data. They have their own mechanism for um, emitting electromagnetic frequencies. And they're doing a lot of damage, a whole lot. Look at this. It's really all of these little, little blips. But the perfect circular lines, the, the uh, straight lines, the right angles, you know that Mother Nature ain't involved. This is man controlling weather. This ain't what weather fronts used to look like. A lot of people are suffering the consequences of man controlling weather and the numbers just continue to add up every single day. <laughs>